Amen. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that so very, very much. Take your Bible, please. Go back in the book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 31. And as I read, you can follow along where the Bible says, And he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men that they, watch it now, and they shall kill him. And after uh, he is killed, he shall rise the third day. You know, this is a, a great time to be able to celebrate our risen Lord. Uh, is the time when we look and thank the Lord for all that Christ did for us and what an amazing amazing story but yet the story is not a story that ended and was self uh, if you would please ended in its own story time no 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 the story lives on about our Christ not just in our nation but in nations around the world because you see uh, he was just not one that did live he lives today and uh, because of that uh, I want to speak this morning on celebrating Easter celebrating Easter um, when, when I was coming up as a young boy uh, whenever it was our birthday time my mother had what we call the birthday chair I was a special chair she only put it out on birthdays and uh, it was always put at the head of the table and no matter what age you were if it was your birthday oh come evening time you had to sit in the birthday chair now when we were just little kids oh it was fun and it was exciting but when you got around 18 years of age and and mama said okay let's get the birthday chair out and we had to sit in the birthday chair it kind of lost its excitement just a little bit and uh, but can I tell you uh, during those days of celebrating the birthday it, it was amazing uh, that uh, we celebrated it always on the birthday uh, but I remember standing in line getting my license and uh, my daddy uh, bought my older brother his first car and within three days Dave wrecked the car and so he said from now on uh, we're gonna make a new policy we don't buy any of you boys a car uh, you buy your own car matter of fact you you cannot get your license until you have enough money to buy the car pay for the fuel and prove to me you can pay insurance then you can get your license and so I was 18 years of age before I got my driver's license I'm standing there with mom in the line to get my license and all of a sudden my mother looks down at my birth certificate and she says oh no I said what, what's oh no and she said well oh, I'm, I'm sorry Mike uh, so what do you mean you're sorry I, I'm your son are you sorry I'm your son and she said oh no she said but for years she said we've been celebrating your birthday on February the 11th and I just noticed on your birth certificate you were born on February 9th <laughs> and I said oh no you mean we've been celebrating my birthday all these many years on February the 11th and I was born on February I said mom how could you forget that she says I don't know she said, but uh, happy birthday, I guess I need to tell you, on February the 9th. And so all those years, I sat in that chair. But I said, oh, what do you mean, oh? <laughs> I sat in that chair, and it was on the wrong day. And you say, about Easter, well, can you prove to me that this is the actual day that Christ did arise? I, I can't prove that to you, nor could anybody else in this room. But I can tell you this, I thank God that there's a day that all around the world, uh, we know that Christ did rise and we know that because of that there is a day in America that we celebrate called Easter Sunday I'm so glad that we can come together and celebrate our risen Lord uh, let me give you some good reasons to celebrate a uh, statement number one we can celebrate what Christ did for all what Christ did for all uh, you say oh brother Wells I'm an agnostic I sit here today, Pastor Wells, and I'm an agnostic. I believe that there is a God, but I'm just not sure who it is. Uh, you may be here today, and you're an atheist. You say, I don't even believe there is a God. You may be here today, and you believe that a person gets to heaven by their good looks. You might believe they get to heaven because of their intelligent level of ability. You might believe they get to heaven because, after all, they're religiously uh, active in some type of religious institution 
But yet the Bible says what Christ did for all of us. Watch this, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, the Bible says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, uh, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to to the scriptures the Bible says listen to it in verse 15 uh, we're in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 now in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15 the Bible says for he died for all that which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again so we understand this we understand that we can celebrate what Christ did for all he didn't just die shed his blood and die uh, for those that uh, are the Almighty in their uh, powerful thinking ways oh no uh, he didn't die for those that knew nothing about uh, religion only no he didn't die for those that were active to some type of religious institution called a church no he died for all and because of that, you and I can have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he died for me, he died for you, he died for the world. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse uh, 4, it says, Surely uh, he hath been born, it says, uh, it says, hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and did esteem, uh, it says, him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, the Bible says, For he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. It says, The chastisement of our peace was upon him. It says, With his stripes we are healed. And so because of what Christ did for us, we are healed. Now, can I tell you, uh, the Bible says that a person uh, can be justified. A person can be made right. How is that? Well, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, here it is, not of works, lest any man should boast. When I was coming up, I was very religious. I, I had in my mind that, uh, well, God was going to take all my good deeds and he's going to put them on one side of the scale. He's going to take my bad deeds and put them on the other side of the scale. And if my good deeds outweighed my bad deeds, I'd be able to go to heaven. If my bad deeds outweighed my good deeds, then I'd die and go to hell. But you know, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so God says I've got a gift for you what is that gift that gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior and by the way aren't you glad uh, you don't have to try and work your way to heaven Amen. aren't you glad you don't have to try and keep maybe uh, five of the seven sacraments in order to merit your way in aren't you glad that you don't have to be baptized in order to be able to go to heaven Aren't you glad you don't have to live religiously correct in order to be able to merit heaven? Aren't you glad it's through Christ and Christ only? My Bible says, uh, he that hath the Son hath everlasting life. Uh, by the way, he did that for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have uh, everlasting life. And so through Jesus Christ, what he did for the world, he also did for me. Amen. I'm glad that on July 24th, 1979, 835 at night, walking along in a Reese's Carnival ground, a young man, 16 years of age, David Lee, stopped, gave me a Bible presentation of what the gospel was all about. I bowed my heart in a carnival ground. I asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart forgive my sins, be my savior. You say, what happened that night? I'll tell you what happened. That night, God wrote my name in the book of life. Uh, God sealed it onto the day of redemption. What happened that night is I didn't become religious. I, I built now a relationship with Jesus Christ because that night I became born into the family of God. So when I received Jesus Christ as my savior, I took advantage of what he did for all. What he did for all. So when I received Christ as my Savior, it settled it forever. Statement number one, I'm talking about celebrating that which is Easter. Celebrate what Christ did for all. Statement number two, uh, celebrate that salvation is forever. Well, I thank God God's not an Indian giver. Give it today, take it back tomorrow. I thank God you don't have to live it in order to have it. 
There's some religions out there that believe this, that uh, when you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, you're saved as long as you're good. You're saved as long as you live within the righteous connotations of that given religion. But that's not what the Bible teaches. If we go back to the Bible, you're going to find out there's a lot of liberty that God gives us. Wait, but it's only because that we're saved that we have that. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. In this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that not, hath not the Son of God hath not life. That's pretty simple. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, these things, talking about the Word of God, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the Bible teaches that the Word of God was written to us that we can know how to be saved. And by the way, God wrote that for everyone. Billy Sunday was getting ready to preach in a northeastern town, and as often so he did, he contacted the mayor, let the mayor know, I'm getting ready to come, I'm going to have a crusade. I'd like for you to send me the names of those that need spiritual help. The mayor sent him the phone book. You know why? Because all need spiritual help. Amen. My friend, let me tell you something. The day that you think that you have arrived is the day that you're farther from the truth that you ever will. Now, thank God that God saves us. You say, well, I tell you what, I just feel like I, I am, I'm, 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 I'm here. I thank God you're here. But can I tell you, we're all saved, those that have received Christ as Savior, that is, by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, by grace, through faith. I'm so glad I'm saved. That doesn't make me better than anybody else, doesn't make me worse than anybody else. But I can tell you this, that uh, we can celebrate because salvation is forever. The Bible says, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 36, the Bible says, he that believeth, uh, on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, wait a minute. So when I received Christ as my Savior, he gave me that everlasting life. Does that mean that I'll be perfect? No. Does that mean I'll always be righteous? No. Does that mean that uh, I'll always walk around with a halo? No, not unless I stole somebody else's. No, it's only in Christ that we have. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But we have this philosophy out there that when you receive Christ as your Savior, that now you become more perfect than man uh, that is not safe. It's not true. It's not true. Once you receive Christ as Savior, you can smile on a rainy day. Why? Because you're saved. You can smile if it ever does again snow in Texas because you're saved. You can smile on a bad day. Why? It's not because of who you are. Stay with it now. But it's because of what he did for you. We are saved by grace. Now, because of that, you can enjoy living the Christian life. Isn't it neat to live the Christian life? Uh, isn't it fun? You know, be able to lay your head on your pillow at night and know for sure if you died, you go to heaven. Uh, be able to be in Dallas traffic and it doesn't unnerve you because after all you're trusting in the Savior to help you make it through I mean uh, isn't it good to be saved and know it statement number one uh, here's what we ought to celebrate celebrate what Christ did for all I'm talking about ways to celebrate or wise to celebrate on Easter Sunday uh, celebrate the salvation that God gave us why that salvation is forever listen friend you don't work to get it and you don't work to keep it for by grace are you saved through faith and so when I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior I, I am saved forever. He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. And so when I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, you say, well, oh, why do you go to church so much? Because I like it. Amen. Why, do, why do you read the Bible? Because it's good. Well, why do you tell people about Jesus Christ? Because they deserve the right to know. Uh, yesterday, we had what we call the hunt. Uh, we went to city parks, as you can tell, uh, uh, that uh, Brother Bachman participated in that. His facial color has now changed. Looks like a lobster. 
And so uh, he stood out there and said to the son, fry me, I dare you. And the son did. And so, but uh, uh, can I tell you, listen, we went all over the uh, different places and uh, in parks and whatnot, uh, just giving out the, the plan of salvation, having Easter hunts uh, for our community. And we're going to add to that and make that bigger and better every year. But uh, uh, can I tell you what a privilege it is to be able to uh, have those that would come participate in the Easter hunt and then have chairs for them to come and sit in and hear the good news, the clear presentation of the gospel and watch boys and girls and teenagers and moms and daddies uh, bow their hearts to receive Christ as Savior and some of you are here today because you participated in the hunt yesterday what well, can I tell you what a blessing that is it's a blessing to be able uh, to share Christ uh, so we celebrate the privilege of witnessing to others statement number one we celebrate it how by realizing what Christ did for all we celebrate it uh, how do we celebrate why do we celebrate because salvation is for Ever. A statement number three, we celebrate the privilege of witnessing to others. Now, what's that mean, witnessing? That simply means just sharing your story about what Christ did for you. Uh, that's all. Uh, some people kind of say, well, you know, I could never talk to anybody about Jesus Christ. If you can talk to them about a hamburger, you can talk to them about Jesus Christ. It's not hard. You know, all, all of us stand up, if you will, to kind of help me illustrate. Let's say that one day that uh, Brother Butler becomes my dearest, best friend. I mean, just he, he's just my poopum buddy, old pal. I mean, he's just it. Now, wait a minute. And so we spend time walking together, and we talk together, and we share things together, and we become pretty tight-knit. I mean, we become pretty bond. All right, now watch this, if you will. When he hurts, then, I hurt. When he rejoices... I rejoice why because I'm spending time with him so that's one good thing about a church a church is not some place where you come and you know you pretend to be something that you're not and so you kind of just you know I got that got that you know and it's not supposed to be that way uh, you're supposed to come and just enjoy the fact that you're saved I'm saved and we can fellowship together Amen. that's a good thing <clears throat> That's a good thing. Amen. I watch this if you will. And so here's what we see. We see this, that uh, we celebrate the privilege of witnessing. As we're walking along one day, maybe I'm not saved or whatever, but he's my friend. And he begins to tell me this story about what Christ did for him. Now, what's he doing? He's just talking to me. That's all he's doing. He's conversating. Uh, by the way, if we can conversate about something that interests us, certainly we can conversate about Christ. Here's what the Bible teaches. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. The Bible says this. The Bible says, And all things are of God. It says, Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. So uh, we have the ministry of being able to just to share our gospel testimony story. Uh, what a privilege that is. The Bible says to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing, it says, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh, there was uh, uh, a chaplain uh, years ago in the United States Senate. Uh, his name was Edward uh, Everett Hale, and he said this, uh, and by the way, this has been quoted very uniquely by many, many legislators across the uh, years. He said, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. Now, what is that? Uh, that uh, it, it's a testimony of somebody that's going to give their very best, not the best that somebody else can do. You don't have to have a certain personality in order to share Christ. We had a privilege to go to Cebu, Philippines, and this is my 14th year in a row of preaching that particular conference, and we had about uh, 3,400, 500 or so that attended nightly, and what a blessing it was to be able to spend time with these precious young people and their youth directors and their pastors and things of that nature, uh, and uh, we stayed in a hotel, and, and they gave us, I don't know, maybe because there was a little bit of confusion or maybe because of the fact that they wanted us to be more blessed or maybe they thought that we just needed it. But we got not one fruit basket, right? We got two in a room, two fruit baskets. I couldn't eat that much fruit. I'd become fruity. 
there's just no way. And, and so I, I ate what I could. The mangoes, uh, very different uh, over there, very sweet, not stringy or nothing. And just, I just enjoyed the and I had this uh, lady, the maid that would come, and she would do her rooms, you know, and, uh, and she was a part of the staff there as we stayed in the hotel, and, and so she would come up every day, and she would do the rooms and whatnot, and when I wasn't attending the conference in the morning time, I had to do some work or whatever, I caught her one day, and I said, man, you have done such a great job. I mean, just a great job. And, uh, and so I, I like to share some fruit with you. And I, I, I've got this one. I'm not yet opened it. And, and there's no way I'm going to get to it. And so I, I'd really like for you to have this. And she said, oh, no, pastor, I can't take that. I said, oh, no, I'd like for you to have it unless it's against the rules. Go ahead and take it. You'll enjoy it. Take it home to your family. And just because it's great fruit. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal fruit. And you will really enjoy it. You need to go ahead and take it. And she said, oh, she said, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the gift. I said, I've got a greater gift than that. She looked at me. Her eyes got big. She was probably thinking I was going to buy her a car or something. I said, I've got a greater gift than that. I'd like to share with you about Jesus Christ. I'd like to share with you about how to go to heaven. Wouldn't you like to know that? She said, I've never heard that before. I said, well, let me help you. Go ahead and sit down right here. So she sat down, and, and uh, her helper was standing over by the door, and, and, and I took the Bible, and I showed her how to be saved, and, and, and she bowed her heart, and she received Christ as Savior, and she said that. She said, thank you for the fruit. But more than the fruit, thank you for explaining to me how to go to heaven. I'm so glad I'm going to go to heaven now. I said, isn't that great? And she said, oh, that is great. And so uh, can I tell you, listen, uh, uh, just sharing what Christ did for you, isn't that fun? To be able just to share the testimony, what Christ did for you. I uh, had the privilege to preach on that first night. We had uh, uh, about 100 young uh, people that came forward. Never had that many young people come forward for salvation in one service uh, at a youth conference. And about 100 of them came forward that night to receive Christ as Savior. And you say, oh, it must have been a powerful sermon. I don't know anything about that. I just know this, that I just shared what Christ did for me. You know, and as you share what Christ has done for you, you would be amazed at how God will use that. You don't have to be somebody that's a preacher. You don't have to be somebody that's a missionary. And you don't have to be somebody that knows a lot about the Bible. All you do is just tell others about Christ. Uh, may I say this? Can I say that uh, in celebrating Easter, uh, celebrate what Christ did for all. Uh, celebrate that salvation is forever. Celebrate the privilege of witnessing uh, to others. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of uh, John Jacob Astor. Uh, he was America's first multimillionaire. He was the richest man in America. He died in the Titanic. Uh, 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 when the Titanic went down, John was on it and he died. He said, I am the most miserable man on earth. Why? Because wealth uh, doesn't give you the true riches that you need. True riches is found in Christ. J.D. Rockefeller, uh, he was the founder of Standard Oil Company, richest man in America at his death. He said this, I've made millions, but it's never brought me one ounce of happiness. Uh, W.H. Uh, 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 Vanderbilt said this, uh, he said at the day that he made his first $200 million, he said, uh, it's enough to kill anyone. That's what he said about it. It's enough to kill anyone. Uh, may I say that true riches is fa Andrew Carnegie said this. He said, millions, millions seldom made me smile. Henry Ford said this. He said, I was happier when I was just a simple mechanic. See, sometimes we look at, uh, man, you know, we've got this, we've got that, we've got the other, but true riches is found in Jesus Christ. May I say that as we put our faith in Christ, we receive him as Savior. Here's what we understand. It gives us the ability to talk to other people about Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing how we can talk to other people about Jesus Christ and God uses us individually to share that good news with other people. How do you celebrate Easter? You celebrate it uh, because of what Christ uh, has done for us. 
Uh, uh, that's why. Uh, why do we do it? Because salvation is forever. Because uh, we have the privilege of being able to witness to other people. That's how we do it. Then let me say this. We celebrate the privilege, celebrate the privilege of, of helping believers grow. You know, it's one thing for a person to get saved. It really is. But I thank the Lord that after I got saved, somebody helped me to grow. They taught me how to read the Bible. They taught me uh, uh, how to enjoy Christianity. And they taught me how to grow as a believer. That's why we have the adult discipleship training. And I'm so proud of the many, many people that has gone through that. And you're faithful and you love the Lord because uh, somebody took the Bible and showed you how to grow. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, And I, brother, and count not, uh, count not uh, it says, cannot speak. It says, I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but it was unto cardinal, even as unto babes in Christ. He says, I fed you with milk, not with meat. Uh, Where unto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Uh, First uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk uh, of the word, it says uh, that ye may grow thereby. Uh, Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible says, But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be both uh, now, it says, to whom be uh, glory both now and forever. Amen. So God wants us to continue to grow. God wants us to continue to uh, take that which we have and be able to uh, help others also to grow with what we have. David Livingston, a pioneer to uh, Africa, walked 29,000 miles uh, seeking uh, to be able to prepare the interior, the, the continent of Africa for the gospel. Uh, he wrote back and he said, I need missionaries to come. One missionary wrote him back and said, well, uh, tell me an easy way to get to you. And David Livingston wrote him back. He said, I'm not looking for Christians that are looking for the easy way. I'm looking for Christians that make their own way. Now, you know, sometimes uh, helping others is a difficult thing. Helping others to grow is a difficult thing. Sometimes our babies, when, when they were little, and today is, I think, Andrew's birthday, uh, one of our grandchildren, but I remember when our babies were just little bitty kids, uh, our baby, Sylvia and I, and our children, and I remember when they were just little bitty, and when they had the stomach ache or they had the fever or something like that, they didn't want to take the bottle. It was hard. It was hard on parents because we love our children. And, and can I tell you something, children? Don't ever think your parents don't love you. I mean, they love you. They, they brought you to church. They love you. They, they give you food. We live in such a selfish society that if you don't get what you want right when you want it, you don't think mom and daddy care. But they fed you this morning. They care about you and they love you. I watch this, uh, but when our babies would get sick, Brother Palmore, oh my, Sylvia and I, we would begin to pray and we begin to even weep because we, we, we hurt for our children when they were sick, when they had fever and things of that nature. We, we, we felt that on the inside. And you know, as a believer, as somebody that's saved, I want everybody to grow in Christ. I want everybody to mature. And as a pastor, I'm going to be honest with you, but as a pastor, when I see people not growing like uh, I think they ought to be growing, oh, that hurts my heart. Uh, That bothers me inside. I do my very best to try and love people and help people. And you know, uh, God wants every single one of us to be able to grow. The Associated Press did an agricultural study years ago of what it would take to be able to produce 100 bushels of corn. Here's what they found out. In order to produce 100 bushels of corn, it would take uh, 4 million pounds of water. It would take 6,800 pounds of oxygen. It would take 5,200 pounds of carbon. It would take 160 pounds of nitrogen. It would take 125 pounds of potassium, 75 pounds of yellow sulfur, and numerous other elements to be able to produce just 100 bushels of corn. Then they said this, out of all that it takes in order to produce 100 bushels of corn, it only takes 5% of man's effort. Man only gave 5%. But can I tell you what? If somebody wasn't out there spreading those minerals, if somebody wasn't out doing their part, even though it was only 5%, you never would have had 100 bushels of corn. 
See, somebody had to go out to the field. And that's like us as believers. We, we, uh, uh, we've tasted of the Lord. We see that he is good. We've seen how God can work in a house and how God can work in a heart, how God can work, if you would please, in a family. We have seen all that. And because of that, we have a strong desire to help people come to know Christ as Savior. And not only that, we have a strong desire to help people grow in their faith towards the Lord. We have a strong desire to be able to nurture them and be able to help them become healthy Christians as they grow closer to Christ. Oh, can I tell you, uh, there's great reasons to celebrate that which is Easter. Uh, celebrate what Christ has done for all. Celebrate that salvation is forever. Celebrate the privilege of witnessing to others. Celebrate the privilege of being able to help believers grow. That's a great way to celebrate what Christ has done for us on this day that we call Easter here in America, celebrating our risen Lord. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege to be able to come, be able to open a Bible and learn and grow. And God